Warning, the video you're about to watch contains mathematics at the level of college algebra and trigonometry. All material has an assumed prerequisite of both Algebra 1, which is elementary algebra, and Algebra 2, which is intermediate algebra. While some prerequisite topics are reviewed briefly, a more thorough review of these entrance topics can be found by searching the web. It's the system of equations. We must deal with them all at once. Always looking for solutions. Positive outlook overcomes. Hello, my name is Roy Simpson, professor of mathematics at Cosumnes River College in Sacramento, California. In this video, we're going to graph the tangent and cotangent functions. It is assumed that you already know the base graphs for the tangent and cotangent functions. And there is some critical information that you need from that video, which is a previous video in this series. Um, and that is called deriving the base graphs for tangent and cotangent. Specifically, you're going to need to recall that the period of both the tangent and cotangent, pi. And honestly, that's the natural period for those functions. And so um, otherwise, everything, almost everything else that we were doing to graph the sine and the cosine is the same. When I say almost, actually, um, one thing you need to note is that tangents and cotangents do not have amplitudes because they don't have maximums or minimums. So I'm going to write that up here. So that's one thing you really don't have to worry about. In fact, to be honest with you, the lead coefficient, I'm sorry, the coefficient of the trig function, whether it's cotangent or tangent, really doesn't play a lot into graphing it, except if it's negative or, yeah, negative, basically. So the, we're just concerned, is it flipped upside down or not? That's really what we're concerned with. Uh, let's see, other things that you would know from graphing sines and cosines. So first thing you talk about with sines and co cosines is what's the amplitude? Well. Like I said, there's no amplitude here, but I will state that our base function is the cotangent. So I'm going to start there. No amplitude, but now I'm going to compute what is the period of this function. And just like with sines and cosines and therefore secants and cosecants, all of our cotangents and tangents can be written in the following form. And pretty much the meaning of everything is still the same as before, except the period is not two pi over B, but instead one pi, because that's the actual period of the tangent and cotangent. It's one pi over B. Let me write that in here over B. So that's going to be how you compute the period of the cotangent and tangent. Take pi, divide it by this B value. So that's going to be pi over pi over two, which will be two. And let's see, the step size is the other thing that sort of changes here. So the step size, we really don't need four pieces of information. You only need two pieces of information. So let me show you why. Here are the graphs of the tangent and the cotangent. And right now we're graphing the cotangent. So let's go ahead and go down to this cotangent graph. And notice really all you need is where do you begin, where's the middle, and where's the end. So you split this into two different intervals. So we just need a step size of two here. Well, I meant to change the highlighter color, but it didn't stick. So there we go. You just have, you're going to divide your interval into two pieces. That's it. So again, we take this interval and we're going to divide it into two pieces. So it's the period over two. So that's the difference between graphing the sine, the cosine, the secant, and the cosecant versus graphing the tangent and cotangent. First of all, the tangent and cotangent have a period of pi. So it's pi over b rather than two pi over b. And there's not as many critical or key points with tangents and cotangents. So it's only the period divided by two. Yeah, that's it. So a period over two is just one in this case. And now everything else is the same. The phase shift is still negative C over B, but in this case, we don't have a plus C here. So we can just go ahead and say that C is zero. And our vertical shift also is zero. And just to give you a heads up, that usually is the case with tangents and cotangents. 
Vertical shifts on these are rare, very, very rare. All right, let's go ahead and graph this now. I will graph my midline, which is the vertical shift. And so let's go ahead and do that very quickly here. And since there is no vertical shift, the midline is actually just the X axis. And then I go ahead and graph the cotangent. Now here's the deal. When you graph the cotangent and the tangent, you need to also graph their asymptotes. Even though you haven't labeled anything yet, the reality is it's much easier to graph the asymptotes at the beginning rather than at the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and just draw in two vertical pipes here because I know the cotangent, there we go. I know the cotangent is going to start high and go low, the positive cotangent that is. So it's gonna start up here and end down here and halfway in between, it'll cross the X axis. So I'll go ahead and just graph that. I should say halfway in between, it crosses the midline. There we go. And now I will go ahead and use my phase shift to state where the beginning of this graph occurred. Well, there is no phase shift. So it started at X equals zero. Now I will use my step size to label my next X value, which is this guy, one. And then I'll use my step size again to get to the next important value, which is this next asymptote. That's it. Those are our really our three key points here, beginning, middle, and end. That would be a period of two. You could see it from zero to two, that works. And anything else I need to label here? Well, the Y axis. So let me draw in the Y axis here. Uh, it's at X equals zero. So I'll draw that in. Although it is a vertical asymptote, I'll still draw it in on top of it, why not? Notice I didn't draw in any Y values. It's because there really, I mean, there is technically a Y value you could plot here, but I don't have my students do that. I just don't think that's worthwhile. So uh, I'll go ahead and uh, maybe say that it, it does continue on the other side of both of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and just showcase that. And same thing over here. Okay, so that's just to show my instructor. Yes, I know this tan this cotangent, sorry, not tangent, but the cotangent curve here, it does go on forever and ever and ever. In fact, it would cross here at three and it would cross back here at, uh, let's see, zero, negative one. So, but that's so that my instructor knows, oh, okay. So this student knows that it does continue forever and ever. Like I said, there's not really anything else to label here. So that's why cotangents and tangents are kind of no fun for instructors because they don't really showcase a lot of information. But let's just see what the next uh, example is before I say that, or before I continue saying that. Well, looky here, we do have a vertical shift. First of all, I do want to remind you that uh, this, the way it's written, is no fun. You should really rewrite it to where the tangent function is listed first. Okay, so, and also, notice there's no vertical uh, shift here. I, I actually want that. So I am going to create, I don't know why, I think I wrote one with a vertical shift, but for some reason it didn't stick, or maybe that's my next example. Yeah, that's my next example. So I'll, I'll leave it the way it's written. So there we go. I just consider reordering that to be very important. All right, so the base graph here is just a regular old tangent. Remember, tangents and cotangents do not have amplitudes. Technically, secants and cosecants don't either, but the reality is you use the sine and cosine to graph the secant and cosecant, so you need to use amplitude there. But tangents and cotangents, you'll never discuss amplitude. However, uh, we can talk about the period of this function. Remember, the period of the tangent and the cotangent naturally is pi, and then we're going to divide that by b to find the actual period of this specific tangent function. So it's pi over two. And then the step size, step size. Since there's not a lot of information to tangents or cotangents, it'll just be the period divided into two groups, not four like the sine, cosine, secant, and cosecant. Period divided by two is pi over four. Let's see, uh, phase shift. Again, it'd be negative C over B, but there is 
No value for C, so it's zero. Vertical shift there is. It's negative four. So now I have everything I need to start graphing and I will just graph the midline here. So here's my midline and uh, I'll make that disappear, the ruler disappear. And so this is a Y equals negative four. Now I'm gonna go ahead and graph the tangent curve. Now, my advice in the previous video still holds. I, I totally get that the tangent curve looks like this. A lot of people have learned it that way. Oh, it looks like this from negative pi over two to positive pi over two. But I'm telling you that's a terrible way to remember it because uh, your shifts and transformations will be broken if you do that. So instead, you should think of it this way. Starting at zero, it increases forever until you get to that vertical asymptote at pi over two. And then it continues increasing until you get to pi, but from below. So that's, that's my base graph for my tangent. That's the only one that has that ugliness to it, but you have to graph it this way. It is, I'm just telling you, uh, I'm gifting you with good advice here. Please follow it. So notice that I only have a vertical, one vertical asymptote here in my base graph. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw a vertical asymptote. Uh, red for vertical asymptote. There we go. And maybe I should shift this down a little bit to get more of a vertical asymptote in there. And I'll move that off to the right. And let's see. Now we're just going to go ahead and graph our base tangent. Uh, and I'll use black for that. So I'll just say it starts here. It ends there. That looks somewhat symmetric. Maybe I should make that a little bit further over. And here's our base tangent graph. Just like that. All right, now that we have this tangent graph done, as far as the base graph of it, let's go ahead and label the key points. So phase shift, that's gonna be our first point, and that is a zero. And then we go by the step size to get to the next important key point, which is actually the vertical asymptote. That's going to be at x equals pi over 4. And the last key point is this guy right here, and that's 2 pi over 4. Again, you're increasing by the step size here, so there you go. Then we draw in just like before. So I'm done with the vertical shift and the phase shift and the step size period. We're pretty much done there. So now I just draw in the Y axis. I'll just bring this up, draw in the Y axis. It's at X equals zero. So we'll just go ahead and do that and draw below as well. There we go. That's the Y axis. Now, of course, we know where the X axis is. It's four units above Y equals negative four. And that is going to be mm, probably right here, my guess. I mean, it's totally a guess, but it's definitely above y equals negative four. So I'll just state that that's the x axis. We should also mention that this continues, this pattern continues on forever in both directions. And so it is kind of important here to go ahead and label maybe yet another asymptote, just even though if, well, okay, if your instructor only asks for one period, then you're done. But if they don't state it, I think with a tangent, it's kind of helpful to maybe graph one or two more asymptotes. Remember, they're only, they're only a couple more steps away. So if this point is at two pi over four, the next vertical asymptote would be a pi over four away from that equidistant here. So I'm just gonna draw one in here. It doesn't really take a lot to just draw out a quick vertical line. This is x equals 3 pi over 4. And that just allows me to say, okay, well, it just continues to do this. And now my instructor, even with just with that, can see I know what I'm doing. Okay. So that's what I would recommend doing in this case is just kind of get a couple asymptotes in there, just so your instructor knows that you know it's two, it's pi periodic, that it has this behavior. The final example here is actually graphing with a phase shift because we haven't done one of those. And actually those are kind of important. So let's do one. Uh, the base graph here is a negative tangent, not a tangent. Remember, tangents and cotangents don't have amplitudes. So I don't have to worry about that. The period of this function will be, again, the period of the tangent, which is two, which is regular old pi, not two pi, divided by 
B, which is 3. Therefore, the step size, again, for the tangent and cotangent, you just divide the period by 2. So it equals the period over 2, which will be a pi over 6. And then we deal with the phase shift. Phase shift. Uh, that is going to be a negative C over B, just like before. Um, that is a negative negative pi over 6, so pi over 6, over uh, 3. So that's a pi over 18. That's our phase shift. And finally, vertical shift. Well, that's going to be a 1. All right. So now let's go ahead and graph the uh, midline. Do that at a height of 1. Now I'll get that out of our picture now. Y equals 1. And let's see. Now we're graphing the upside down tangent. Again, I chose to do two tangents in a row because I want you to remember the tangent base looks like this. So just be very aware of that. So I'm going to go ahead and flip that upside down and draw the negative tangent. And that requires a vertical uh, asymptote. So I'll go ahead and draw a vertical asymptote in here. Boop. You don't have to make the noise though. All right, and uh, turn off the ruler. Upside down tangent would look like, let's make it as evenly spaced as possible. Upside down means it starts going down first here. Oh, sorry, I have to kind of dash that out. It's just a habit of mine. All right, so there we go. That would be the uh, flipped tangent. And let's see what else. So I already did the vertical shift. Now I'm going to state what the phase shift is where we start graphing, which is pi over 18. And we're going to step by a size of pi over six. Let's get this in the same denominator. That's three pi over 18. So I'm going to take steps of size three pi over 18. So there's pi over 18 right there. You add three pi over 18 and you will be at four pi over 18 right here for the uh, vertical asymptote. And the next key point is right here at another three pi over 18 away, which will be at seven pi over 18. And so that takes care of step size and the period because the distance between the beginning and ending is if you measure it out, pi over three, seven pi over 18 minus one pi over 18 is six pi over 18, which reduces to pi over three. And that is it except we need to label or throw in the, our axes. Well, our y-axis is just a little bit to the left of this point. So I'm just gonna throw a y-axis right here. There we go, y. And our x-axis is just slightly below a height of one. So I'm gonna throw it maybe right here. And that's our x-axis. And as I mentioned in the previous problem, it might be nice to showcase another asymptote if you can. And so I'm going to go ahead and just showcase another asymptote here. I'm just going to draw it in. Nothing big. I'll let this uh, curve fall here. Just like that without the sound. And uh, remember, it's just a step away from 7 pi over 18. So the step size is 3 pi over 18. So this is x equals uh, 7 pi plus 3 pi is 10 pi over 18. It's always nice to kind of see that extra little asymptote. And of course, in the other direction, it increases and there's an asymptote over there as well. All right, so that's all you really have to do for the tangent and cotangents. They're oddball functions, to be very honest with you. Um, as far as graphing goes, you're likely going to graph a tangent and then a secant or cosecant um, and sines and cosines uh, all the time. It's the system of equations. We must deal with them all at once. Always looking for solutions. Positive outlook overcomes. Obstacles getting in our way comes. Effects more than we can sometimes see. Things for what they are and work together until you feel at peace. Listen close. Too much that isn't cold Sure, you may really hurt inside It doesn't justify you to speak too loud and cry